Welcome. I've done a number of previous videos on uh, Kiwix offline Wikipedia, and a couple of those were using Kiwix Serve, which is software to serve up a Wikipedia on your local LAN. And I'll put a link in the description to my Kiwix playlist where you can find those other videos. In this video, I want to talk about serving up multiple Wikipedia files using Kiwix Serve. So this video out of context will not be super helpful, so you'll need to watch the original videos, and I'm adding on to that with this video. So in the previous videos, I went to this Kiwix page where you can download ZIM files. So I'll just search this page for English. You can see a lot of different Wikipedias here that are in English, but we can also look up things like Wikibooks. And you'll find this is in English too. Right here. So there's Project Gutenberg, there's Wikibooks, there's Wikivoyage, Wiktionary, there's a bunch of different things, and I've downloaded a couple to show to you. So there are a couple things to consider, is that like Wikibooks here is five megabytes, and that doesn't make sense. So something is wrong with this version of Wikibooks. So you'll need to pay attention to that when you're trying to get this working. And the other thing to consider is the Qwix serve version you're using may not work with the newer Zim files. So I did a previous video, you'll find it in my playlist where I actually update Qwix serve. So if you find a bunch of these that you like that you want to serve, what I would recommend doing is adding one at a time and testing it to make sure the Zim file is compatible and not causing any problems. So I have two of these loaded with multiple Zim files here. The one on the left is a Raspberry Pi serving up Qwix serve. And this one is my NAS serving it up with Docker. So we'll go back to the Raspberry Pi. And in that one, we created this Qwix service. So in order to host multiple Zim files here, you want to do qwix serve mb, and then we have the full path to each Zim file. So I've tried this where I just do star.zim and it didn't work. You could try it on your system. Maybe a future version of Qwix serve will support that, but it doesn't seem to support it here. So I had to list out the full name of each file. So it's a little bit of a hassle, but it's a one-time thing you do and you're done. And again, I would add one at a time and test it to make sure it's working. So I have all these Zim files here. And if I go to the page, you can see they're all listed here. There's Wiktionary, Simple English, Wikipedia, Wikiversity, the FET Interactive Simulations, and Wikipedia Simple English. So if we click on Wiktionary, you can look up words here. We can look up dog, and it brings up dog. It tells us it's a noun. There's a synonym is puppy, so we can click on that, and we see puppy here. We can look up pup, look up dog. You can move around in these things, domestic. So that's a simple dictionary. So we're on Wiktionary, and if we want to go back to a different wiki, we can hit the back button. But I made a video on making a kiosk, and that doesn't have a back button on there. And there's no like little home button here to send you back. So that's kind of a problem. If you want to use this on a kiosk, you can actually go and click an external link on that kiosk, the one that I made, and it will send you back to that home screen. Also, after I think it was five minutes, it will automatically go back to that screen. Aside from that, it's not super great. It would be nice if it had a little button up here to take you back. So let's move over to the Docker version, which is here. And I have a couple different ones here. I have Wikipedia, Wiktionary, OpenStreetMap, Wiki, Wikibooks, FET Interactive Simulations, Wikipedia Simple English, Wikivoyage, and Ray Charles. So if I click on one of these, there's actually a little home icon here. And I don't know if there's supposed to be a home icon on the regular Kiwix serve, but that would be very useful in the kiosk I made. So if I click that here, it takes me back to this page. So this is the full Wikipedia. If I type in United States, we have an article here. This is the older version that's missing some icons. And that brings me to a point that the newest Zim file didn't seem to work with the version of Kiwix serve on Docker. So if something doesn't work, you'll have to kind of watch it because someone will probably update it eventually and fix it. So you'll need to update either the Kiwix serve software or the Zim file, depending on which one's causing the problem. This Zim file does seem to work on my Wikipedia kiosks. So I think it's the Docker file that needs to be updated. So every couple weeks I'll go and check and see if there's a new update on that. So we'll go back to home. We have Wiktionary here, just like the other one. There's this OpenStreetMap wiki. And I guess before I get too deep into this, I want to say on the Docker one, you had your Zim files in a folder. So this is the folder I have, and I have a bunch of Zim files in here. And as I'm testing them, 
I named them NIM, and you can name them anything that's not ZIM, because what it does is it looks for ZIM files in a directory. So you can rename that extension, and then it won't look for that file. So you can put a bunch of them in here, name them to NIM or something like that, or just delete the ZIM extension, and test them one by one as you turn off and turn on the server. You need to turn it off and turn it on to enable new ZIM files. And the same thing goes for using Kubix serve on Linux is you have to shut that off and turn it back on. So these are the different ZIM files. Let's go back to OpenStreetMap. There's not a tremendous amount on here. This is Browse Map of Iowa. And it took me to OpenStreetMap.org. So it doesn't seem to support everything offline. So you'd obviously want to test this stuff offline before you rely on it. So you wouldn't want to set up OpenStreetMap and send it to uh, Developing Nation and then they open it up and it doesn't work. So you'd want to test this without an internet connection. That can be a little bit tricky to do. You could go into your computer and change the DNS settings to some nonsense, uh, nonsensical IP address, and then it won't be able to access websites. That's one way to do it. Uh, every system's gonna be a little different. So I'll go back to home here. Next we have Wikibooks. Again, this one, if I hit computing here, it says the address can't be opened. So this one doesn't seem to be super developed. This FET Interactive Simulations was cool. So I'll click on this. And this one works on my web browser here, Safari. It would probably work on Chrome Firefox just as well. It doesn't work on my kiosk using the SERP browser. If you install the Chrome browser, it would probably work. So in this one, we have these like little animations and uh, they're interactive things. So we can click on this area builder and you want to click load down at the bottom. And we have explore and game. So I'll hit explore and you can drag these blocks here and it will tell you the area and perimeter. And my browser screen doesn't seem big enough for this. Let's see. Hmm. Something's weird. It's not scrolling here. When I use it on my other computer, this is a 720p display. If you have a 1080p display, this shows up better, I guess. Maybe I can shrink it down. No, it's not shrinking this down. So what this does is it shows you the area and the perimeter. There's all sorts of them. Uh, one of these does uh, waves on a string. So you can move this up and down and you can watch the wave motion. And there are different settings you can do. You can change the amplitude, frequency, damping, and you can see how the wave interacts. So I thought this was a pretty cool thing. Uh, lots of cool animations and they're pretty lightweight. They seem to run fairly well on the browser. And then we also have Wikipedia Simple English. I don't know if you would need to run the full one and the simple one at the same time, but if you had a younger kid, you could set them loose maybe on the simple one and an older kid could go on the uh, full-sized one. Next we have Wiki Voyage. So here you could put in a town and it talks about Chicago, the different areas in Chicago, things you can do. So you could plan a trip using this. And then we have Ray Charles, and that's kind of a test ZIM file, so you can do that to test your system. And certainly you could read up on Ray Charles if you wanted to. So to summarize, on Linux systems, when you do this command for QWIC start in the service, you want to put the full path to each ZIM file, if you're using Docker, you want to put your ZIM files in one directory. If you're doing it on the Raspberry Pi system, you want to add one ZIM at a time and test it. And on the other one, you can either add the ZIMs one at a time or add them all and rename them all and uh, rename them to ZIM one at a time. And you want to shut down and start up the QX serve each time. So I think this is a cool resource to have. It's really neat being able to you know, have Wikipedia offline, and this runs on a Raspberry Pi easily. It runs on a NAS device you can run on your desktop computer. It's really handy as a lot of people are going to be doing homeschooling for the next school year, at least partial homeschooling. And there's still many people that don't have great internet access, so it may be fast at certain times of the day. It may bog down. It may be slow all the time. You could download this at, a, say, a library or a workplace or something like that. And then you could bring it into your home environment and have Wikipedia high-speed access on your local network. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. 
and thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.